there's something I want to say, which is today, for the first time ever, I was out driving around and I realized, hey, I've never seen Sona's home. Oh. Sona has a home that she purchased just before COVID. Yep. And I've wanted to see it. And it's a bit far from where I live, but I was kind of sort of quasi near that area. And I thought I'll stop by. So I called Sona and she said, sure, come on over. She was chatting with me on the phone. And I was talking to her in the car saying, yeah, I'll head your way. I think I know the way um, I'm following Google maps. I think I can get there with your address. And we're chatting. And I thought she said, I'm cleaning up while you come over, just tidying up a bit. And then I heard a noise in the background that sounded like something shutting. And I said, oh, did you just close like a microwave? That's what it sounded like. You just close uh -huh. a microwave. And Sona said something that caught my attention. She said, no, I'm Armenian. We don't have microwave ovens. What? And I don't know what that means. And she wasn't making a joke. And then she said, no, Tack, my husband's Armenian too. So we don't have microwaves. And I thought, this I have to explore. Oh, okay. Why don't Armenian people have microwaves? I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I am too. I never grew up with one, neither did Tack. You go to our parents' house, nobody has a microwave. I can't speak for all Armenians, but I think, I think most Armenians that I've been, houses that I've been to, you don't reheat the food by putting it in a box and zapping it for a minute. You put it back on the stove and you basically recook it. And it is- Laborious. Wow, I'm like a little judgment it's, there. I'm just saying, it's like, do I want that radiation in my house? I don't know. I kind of. Oh, don't. of course <laughs> of all, there's not radiation shooting out of a microwave. Uh, that they fixed that problem two years ago. Uh, <laughs> Donna, the point I'm making that that this, I'm curious about this because this felt like a window into a real thing. You weren't making a joke, but my parents. It's not a generational thing because my parents are much older. Uh, than, than your parents. Uh, my father's like, I think he's 128 years old. He is one of the oldest men to ever live. And he has had, a, we've had a microwave in our house since like the late seventies. Huh. So it's not a generational thing, is it Matt? It's not generational, no. this is something. And Sona, do you think it might be cultural that, yeah. that your culture doesn't believe in putting it in a microwave because that's cheating somehow? It also, you have to admit that when you reheat something in a microwave, it's not the same. So, you know, you I, I wouldn't know it. I've only reheated things in a microwave. Okay. I'm serious. I, I'm completely dependent on a microwave. I take, there's leftover food. My, my wife's a very good cook and she makes stuff and it's in these Tupperware containers and I open it and I put it on a plate and then uh, I put it in the microwave and I put everything on two minutes. I don't care what it is, I put it on two minutes. Um, and then I always forget, reach in and grab the plate with my bare hands, oh. burning the skin on my hands. I do huh. this every single time. A, a squid will learn instantly once it's stung not to approach that object again. I went to a good college and every time I reach in, grab it and uh, my flesh sears. Still, that's what I do with everything. I microwave everything. And I don't know how you can live without a microwave. I just never, you know what? When we, when we were growing up, there was a microwave that was old that someone had that was in the garage that no one used. The only time <laughs> that I ever used it was I would take it down from the shelf that we were using it to where we stored it. And I would heat up the wax that I would use to wax my legs. <laughs> What? Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Yeah, and couldn't you have done that in the oven? <laughs> no, because it's it's different. That's that's the wax that needs a microwave. I don't know how to uh, reheat wax in a microwave, but that was it. I never needed it. I mean, everything. Like I'm sorry. Popcorn. I don't know anything about this. You have to heat up wax and you put it on your legs, and yeah. then and then you pull it off. Yeah, that's yeah. waxing. Yeah, that's what was so. What do you I mean do? you don't know any? <laughs> I don't wax. I don't wax. Do you wax, Matt? Oh yeah. Oh. No. Okay. I don't. <laughs> no. Listen, but, we got but, off track a little yeah, bit there. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned Sona that you mentioned something that intrigues me. You said, uh, "Who needs all that radiation?" <sighs> and do you really think there's a lot of radiation coming out of a microwave? It's there's so much around us, just in general, that I'm kind of like, do I need something else? Not really. And I, I, I'm telling you right now, I've never lived with a microwave. 
Tack has never lived with a microwave. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Does this have anything to do with the fact that your husband, and this is a true story, went to a summer camp that was near Chernobyl? Okay. (laughs) Seriously. So Tack grew up in the Soviet Union, which you know, he was there since until he was 11. He had absolutely no involvement in Chernobyl. No one's blaming. <laughs> Wait a minute, Sona. A no one's. Times. I'm not blaming Tack for Chernobyl, but you told me that he went to a summer camp that no. was near Chernobyl. Also, no. the way you responded and said that he had nothing to do with it now, he didn't blame you. Makes me think, did he have something to do with Chernobyl? No, as he's, he, he wasn't anywhere in the Ukraine when Chernobyl happened. So that and just I think seems like I, you're protesting too much. No, it's just Conan's like, oh, Ukraine, Soviet Union. Oh, no, Armenia, that Soviet is not Union. me. No, D- Tack no. was uh, right there on the bridge watching the plant, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> just implode. I watched the HBO movie, which is very yeah. moving. And there's a scene where there's a young <laughs> where there's a young boy and they say, Tack, get out of here. And he says, someday I marry Sona. He says that. <laughs> he says, someday I marry Sona. It's, and it's, you're wondering like, why is this even in the script? Because it's not a documentary. And he's uh, holding a pivotal part of the reactor that he's taking. Yeah, he's holding a piece of the reactor. He had just, this is the way I had always heard the story. Tack was on a school trip. They went to Chernobyl to see the plant. They said, oh, don't God. touch anything. Tack said, what's in this room? And they said, Tack, you irrepressible scamp. You stay out of that room. Tack went in there, removed an important cooling rod and walked out of the reactor. It exploded, creating one of the worst nuclear disasters ever, after which Tack fled the Soviet Union, came to America, married you, and then you said, maybe we should get a microwave. And he said, who needs a microwave? Watch this. And he just put his hand over the food. Okay. <laughs> Stupid. That's tax origin story. Let's sell that to Marvel. I will say, listen, when we were watching Chernobyl mm-hmm. and you talk about tech having grown up in the Soviet Union, Union a lot, the whole time we were like, fuck, I, we know Conan's going to watch this and we know oh. he's going to have all kinds of material. And then when they introduced an Armenian character whose sole purpose was to kill dogs oh, and that was other awful. animals that was awful that was that awful. We, the whole time you ruined that viewing experience for us like how Why? does that feel because how did, we, how did i ruin it because everything i look at in my life now is like how can conan make a riff of this and no. jokes about this yeah. no i never went after tack in, in any way related to that. that was too horrifying to me i really I, I i i did not joke about that but the minute i realized that tack had had gone to a summer camp pretty much at Chernobyl, okay. I realized, I, ha- I how do I not mention that? How do I not mention that? And that he can reheat, he makes ramen noodles just by cupping his hands. Ugh. You can put the noodles inside. I've seen him do it. He does it at parties, it's fun. Oh, he's, he's this is WandaVision, you know? You're, he's Vision, you're Wanda, because you're witch-like at times. Oh, uh, wow. He, no, I'm saying that in witch like and that you have powers, Sona. That was a compliment. Okay. You know, oh, you're that was a when I say bit. when I say you're a real witch, I mean you have a lot of powers. You uh-huh. are not you are uh outside the norm. Those are all compliments. And when I say that he's vision, I mean he was responsible for the Chernobyl accident and uh he was a boy who was irradiated and now he can make ramen noodles in his hands. That's all I'm saying. God. It's no insult in here at all. There's no insult. There's no exaggeration, there's no goofing around. Oh, it's, it's all, simple. oh, everything you're saying is true. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We have your admission. 